Hello guys, welcome back to Filament Daily channel, back you and myself. I've been missing for quite a while from this channel, but I've made some rearrangements to my time schedule and I will have more time for Filament in general and for this YouTube channel as well. So subscribe to new videos, they are coming. And let's start this with customizing a typical login form and particularly this field of email. So email and password is a typical thing for filament form, but what if you want this to be a username instead? Or maybe even both option except email or username. So how to do that in filament? To customize that login form, we'll take a look at the main admin panel provider and function called login. By default, it has no parameters, but we can pass our own custom login class, which will override anything we want. So here's the default login class from Filament, from vendor, from the package itself, which has methods like authenticate and throw exception and form and others. So by default, it has these components, email, password, and remember form components, which are actually just inputs. And we need to override those. In fact, override this one email form component to have username or email. So we will override and customize three things. The form email component, then submission of the form to be correct with the correct field, and then the validation message for the error. So we need to generate a new Laravel or filament class, which is actually just a PHP class, which would extend that login that you can see on the screen. And for that, we can use a new command in Laravel 11 called make class. So we just generate a new class. Then we open that custom login. It should extend login from filament, this one, filament pages auth. Like this, we don't need any constructor, we just need to override some parts of that class. First, we need to override the get forms and we just copy and we'll change that to our own function for get email form component. So we will create our own get login form component or whatever you want to call it. So we just copy email form component paste into our own class and let's call it get login form component, general login for user or email. And we will call that label of username slash email like this with the name of login like this. And we don't need that email anymore and everything else stays the same. And now instead of that get email form component, we call our own get login form component. So that's step one. And to use that custom login class we just created, we pass that as a parameter in the admin panel provider, custom login class like this. And now if we refresh the form of the login, we refresh and we have that username email. And under the hood, if we take a look at the source of username email, that input, if we scroll all the way right, ID has data login and wire model data login. So not email anymore. So this comes from the parameter text input make here. Okay, now we need to process that login in the submission of the form, right? And for that, we need to override another function from that login class from vendor, which is called get credentials from form data. By default, it is email and password. But if we override that into our own custom login class, we paste and we change data email to data login, which will be assigned as a credential, not necessarily email, but that could be a username username database field from the users table. So how do we decide whether it's email or username? It's kind of a trick here, but we can check if the input is email or not. PHP has a function for that called filter variable, filter var. I will close the sidebar so you will see it. So login type will be either email or username like this. If the data login is email, so contains add symbol dot and stuff like that. There's regular expression under the hood. And then here we use login type as a variable instead of hard coding that to email. So then the form submission mechanism will receive either email with login or username with login. And that would automatically come to the query for the database to check the credentials. So now if I try to log in with email and password, it is successful. And if I sign out and try to log in with username and password, I try to sign in and it's still successful. And this is by the way, the data from the database. So we're querying either by username or by email. 
The final thing we need to take care of is the validation error. So if the credentials are not accepted, there's no validation error on the screen. That's because validation error assumes that there will be email field returned. Or in fact, it returns email by default, but we are waiting for login field now. That's why it isn't shown on the screen. So we need to override one more method from that login class, which is throw failure validation exception. We copy and paste that into our class like this, and we will change data email to data login like this. The validation message stays the same. It comes from filament internals. But now let's see how it works if I put the incorrect credentials, sign in, and now we have error message here near the login field of the form. So yeah, this is just one way how to customize login form in general in Filament. This example is just about username, but with this example, you potentially can understand how to customize anything with login. Just look through the methods and the logic of that login class in Filament and make your changes. We have a few examples of such customizations on our filamentexamples.com. So there's login with Google and Facebook, for example, how to add those into the form or customization of registration form with password strength and generating random password. So check out filamentexamples.com for these or other examples. By purchasing those filament examples, you're actually helping this channel to get funded and me having more time to shoot more videos about filament. That's it for this time and see you guys in other videos.